Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2018 Toy Trends Briefing. I hope, you, hope you're having a great toy fair so far, and I hope it continues. And I hope you're going to love this session. Well, you are going to love this session. Anyhow, um, during the course of last year and this year so far, our Toy Trends group has been scouting trends in various events. They've met with several of our members, and they've taken that information, and they've coupled it with what they've seen on the show floor. And that's there are examples of that you're going to see today. And I just want to introduce the team to you first. There's Isabel Carrion Lopez. Yeah, applause, applause. Applause is welcome, applause is welcome. Adrian Appel. Kristen Morenci Goldman. And Lori Chardarinsky. I did it. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> pronounce her name. Lori Chardarinsky. Okay. And We've also done something different this year. We've expanded our efforts and trends. And we're looking beyond 2018 and looking into the future. And we're partnering with a group called Prodigy Works, which, re which really specializes in that. And Ted Curtin, who's executive vice president of, of Prodigy Works, is going to say a few words, first about you know, the company, but also on the initiative that they're working on that he's going to be presenting at PlayCon in May. Thank Take you, Ken. Uh, I'm sure you don't want to hear me speak too much because these look like some incredible examples of some fun toys that we want to learn more about. Uh, again, my name is Ted Curtin. I run a group called Prodigy Works. Uh, we're a diverse global high IQ network that originally came out of Mensa. Uh, we bring in rapid, outside, high-level thinking to the innovation process as an accelerator. Uh, it's a fast, collaborative, and exciting process that we go through. Um, and with the Toy Association this year, some of the areas that we've looked at uh, include technology, and you see it in your hand, walk the floor, you'll see it out there, all the new technologies that are affecting every aspect of our life, but certainly what we play with and, and how we play. Uh, and even more so, some of the technologies and how that's creating a push towards more nostalgic toys and ways to play as well. Uh, another area that we're looking at is retail. Um, the seismic shifts in retail that we all see, um, some view these and, and meet these with concern. We actually see a tremendous amount of uh, opportunity and some very exciting possibilities on the retail front. And then finally, uh, the consumer, the toy consumer we need to expand our view of who that toy consumer is and how that will change and, and of course, the uh, associated people who are going to purchase for that end user as well. Uh, and then the other thing that we bring to this as an overarching lens is the notion of futuring. Throughout our diverse global network, uh, we employ a number of futurists who look at the trends and forces and where they'll intersect. Uh, and that has given us an incredible lens in terms of what the toy ecosystem of the future will look like. Um, I'll be presenting these trends uh, and these critical insights at PlayCon in San Francisco, and I hope to see a lot of you there. Thank you. everybody, I'm Adrienne Appel with the Toy Association. And just before we launch into all these key trends for this year, I want to point out that a lot of these products that all of us will be talking about may intersect into other trends. So I might be talking about something here and it may apply down there and that's great because the product is more than on trend. So the first trend I'm going to be talking about is the big reveal. And that's really the unboxing trend that we've seen. Um, you know, this has kind of started out with the YouTube personalities years ago. Kids love to watch them. Well, toy makers have gotten really innovative, and they're bringing that play pattern into toys that kids can play with at home. So I know a lot of you know about LOL, Pick Me Pops, a lot of the hot toys from last year. This year, you're going to see a lot more of those, and they're going to be really, really different. So I have a little sampling, but if you walk the show floor, you know, there's probably about 100 more out there, so um, take a look. This is from Moose Toys, and this is called Scruffaloves. Um, so when you unbox this toy, it actually comes like this. So what this is, is it's a new take on a rescue pet. So once you kind of w apply water and you wash it off, you're gonna either figure out what animal you have. So you could have a bunny, a cat, or a dog, but it's, you're unboxing your own plush, which is really, really fun, and kids can care for it and play with it. So it um, has a collectible aspect as well, but really that big reveal, you know, you have this box, and this turns into your own little pet. So this is really, really cute, and this will be out for the fall, and it's gonna retail for about $20. 
So next, this is another fun unboxing. Um, this is Play Foam Pals. So it comes in this capsule, just like this. And then when you open it up, it has you know, the Play Foam that kids love to play with, but you're gonna open it up and there's gonna be a little collectible inside. I'm not gonna unbox it, but it looks like this. So again, it's taking that element of surprise, but bringing in some Play Foam, which we haven't really seen before with the, with the compound. Um, this is another really fun example. This is Smushy Mushy Yolo Froyo. <laughs> I have to say that. So basically, what this is, it's you know frozen yogurt themed. You'll unbox it, and there's a little figure inside. It's a surprise. But what's really fun about this, it takes that frozen yogurt theme to a level. When you put it in the freezer, it'll have a color change aspect. So kids won't know what color it's going to change into. So it kind of continues the fun, and there'll be different series of collectibles in these. Um, this is from Alex Toys, and it's called Breakaway Balls. So you see here, it's a ball. It kind of has some puzzle pieces. I would love to throw it out, but I'm, I'm not going to do that because I'd probably hit one of you. <laughs> but, um, so when you actually throw it on the floor, it will break open like this, and there'll be another collectible ball inside. So kids will be able to collect the different balls, and then you can kind of put the ball back together. So it has that added play pattern, and you can play with it. So just a really fun take on a blind bag collectible using different ways to play. And this is from Hasbro. This is from Littlest Pet Shop. And this is the Littlest Pet Shop, the, the food pets. So when you open this up, you'll see this is a mock-up, so it's not the real thing. But it looks like a can. You'll be able to pull it back, and you'll open it up and find your collectible. And they're all food themed. So there's like a banana split guy. There's a um, hamburger. I saw in their showroom they had a sushi cat, which was absolutely adorable. So taking a popular brand, but the unboxing, that reveal with the kind of opening up of the can is really, really fun. And then this is another way. This is Orbeez Wow Worlds. So it kind of it comes like this. You'll be able to unwrap it. This is the second stage of it. You'll put some water in it. Then once the water comes, you'll be able to kind of see inside which figure you're going to get. And then when you unwrap it, you'll get your figure at the bottom once the kind of Orbeez are disintegrated. So that's a new way to play. And then from Jack Pacific, the Squish Delish line has been out. Um, this is licensed unboxing squishies. So we have the Shopkins, and they're all different ways to play. And again, you know, smushies are hot. And just showing the breadth of the collectible. So I think when we all thought this unboxing thing, I don't think any of us realized all the different aspects it could have and how it's layered really, really deep and really fun and innovative. So that is the big reveal trend. And I'm going to move on to the pet play trend. So pet play has been around forever. Um, you know, kids always love virtual pets, playing with pets. This year, we're seeing so many different types of pet play. So Calico Critters is a brand that's beloved. I think a lot of us probably in this room played with it growing up. This is the Grand Department Store set. So you'll see this is a play set, but it's using the Calico Critters that kids really love to play with. Um, this is going to retail for about $130, I believe, and will be out for the fall. Now. I don't think this needs any introduction, but um, this is Fingerlings. Now, this is the new glitter, um, different <laughs> phrases, different sounds. So this is one of the new takes on one of the hottest toys of last year. And they're also going to have Fingerlings minis, so um, pet play, but this could easily have been on that table. So it's your blind bag, you're unwrapping your Fingerlings minis, and there'll be a bunch to collect. This is really adorable. This is a new virtual pet that you can actually wear. And this is from Skyrock, and it's called Pomsies. Um, it will retail for about $15. There'll be 12 that were released to collect, and it will interact in different ways. So it has nurturing pet play where her eyes will change color the way I interact with her. She has different sensors, so I'm touching her. I don't know if you can tell. I'm feeding her. She's going to meow. There's also a mode. If I hold her down, she's going to do a freeze dance mode. So yeah, you can dance. I'm not going to do it for you. <laughs> so it's just different ways to play. And again, for $15, this is a ton of value. A lot of girls like to kind of hang these from their backpacks and things. So we think this is going to be something. I must be boring her because she's going to sleep. <laughs> um, some more pet play. This is from Folk Manus, and I thought this was really cool. We have it in the different stages, but it will come like this. And this is actually showing the life cycle of a frog. So first it starts out as the egg. You'll see this hologram that kind of shows the transition. But then you'll see it goes from this, and then it will convert to this. And this is actually a puppet. 
so kids can play with it. It will all zip up inside, but it's really teaching kids about, you know, and everything's in here. So it's teaching kids about the life cycle of a frog fruit pet play, which is really kind of cool. And they're just very soft and plush and cuddly. Then this is a really cool thing too. This is my first little veterinarian kit. This is a first time company that you'll find in the launch pad. And this kit is basically inside, has all the things that kids need to learn about being a veterinarian. So they have their workbook. It has a checklist for when you're taking care of the animals. Um, is, what's wrong? Are the eyes dull, lifeless? You can kind of have your checklist of symptoms that they need to ask. It has their own little lab coat in here. And of course it has a pet that you need to take care of. So um, we love this. This is for ages five and up. And last but not least, this is from PlayVision. This is inflatable plush. Now, this will, you actually blow this up. It goes to about five feet. Um, what kid is not going to love this? And what's awesome about it is, is you can actually wash it because you can deflate it and you can take this off and put it in the washing machine. So um, really fun, wow, play value. And one of the things about pet play we like to talk about is that, you know, when is a kid going to have their very own unicorn as a pet? You know, sometimes it's dogs and cats you're nurturing, and that's great because mom and dad might not want to get you a dog or cat. But a lot of mystical creatures we're seeing, like unicorns, sloths, all these different animals that kids would never have an opportunity to have at home as a pet. And that's part of the pet play trend. So again, these are just some examples examples uh, that you'll find on the show floor, and I'm going to pass it off to Kristen for the next trend. Hi. So the next trend that we have here today is something we're calling millennial nostalgia. And this trend is really speaking to the fact that the majority, if not pretty much all, of young parents in the U.S. today are millennials. So although millennials have been defined as being very tech obsessed, as parents they're actually gravitating towards toys that are low tech, classic um, brands and characters that they recognize from their own childhoods because they want to share in those experiences with their children. So the toy industry is coming out with a lot of brands and characters from the 80s and 90s um, and I'm just going to walk you through some examples. So first up we have Polly Pocket from Mattel. This, uh, the brand was launched in 1989 and now almost 30 years later they are bringing back the micro sized sets from the original launch. Um, millennial moms will love this and a new generation of kids will love it as well. Mattel is also coming out with an animated series to kind, kind of amplify the, the poly experience for kids. This will be out in the fall and will retail for about $15. Next up we have My Little Pony from Basic Fun. This is being, this is the, Basic Fun is bringing back the original six ponies from the original launch in 1983. So as a millennial mom myself, I'm very excited about this. I remember playing with this. I would love to have this, play with this with my daughter. You'll also see that they've got their retro style packaging. Um, this will be out in spring and retail for about $10 each. Next we have Fantastic Flowers from Cahoots. This was a bit of a niche toy from the 80s. I, I played with it. You might not recognize it. Um, so what this is, is it's basically an introduction to die cutting for kids. It's a great arts and crafts toy. You place your papers in the press, you roll it through, then you can create beautiful flowers. And as an added bonus, these flowers will last forever. This will be out in, I believe, in summer and retail for around $25. Next up we have Shrinky Dinks from Alex Brands. Um, this was an international phenomenon and this was really reached the height of its popularity in the 80s. It's such a simple toy. You, for those of you who aren't familiar, you color, bake, then it will shrink to this size. This kit is for jewelry making, but you can make pretty much anything. That will be fun for parents to relive with their children. This will be out in, this is available now and, it will retail, and it's retailing for $10. Then we have Harry Potter. So Harry Potter is celebrating its 20th anniversary. So later this year, they're going to be releasing this wand, which is an interactive and motion, motion activating wand. So you can get an idea. So the purpose of this is to learn these spells. There are 11 spells that kids can master. So the wand will prompt, prompt you to do one of the spells, 
Um, you can play this on your own or you can compete with a friend to see who's the master wizard. This will be out later this year in retail for about $25. Last but certainly not least, we have Nickelodeon Slime. This is from Crazy Art. Slime is a huge trend right now, but you know, for a lot of us, when we think of slime and the pioneers in slime, we think Nickelodeon. So this is a little bit of an innovative twist for the 21st century. We have color changing slime. So I'm gonna just show you. When you warm the slime in your hands, Purple to pink, I don't know if you can tell. Um, it actually changes color pretty easily because earlier it was just sitting on my laptop and it, the whole thing turned pink. <laughs> All right, so moving on. Our next trend is inspiring imaginations. So there's something really to be said for good old fashioned play. It's great for children to act out their future roles as parents, maybe role play future careers, hone their artistic talents, explore and create new worlds. And it's really fun for kids because they control so little in their actual lives that through play, the sky is like really the limit for them. And through the genius of play, which is the Toy Association's initiative to raise awareness about play's developmental benefits, um, a lot of research has been done about the benefits of creative imaginary play. So kids who engage in this kind of play <coughs> are able to, they better self-regulate their emotions, they perform better academically, they develop a more problem-solving approach to learning. So it's very, very beneficial on top of being a lot of fun. So I'm gonna walk you through some examples. There's so much out there, but this is just a small sampling. This is the pet, the pet vet from A Suites. They are a new company here at Toy Fair. They're in the launch pad. They have beautiful stuff. Everything is made out of this wonderful cotton. This is super lightweight. So it's easy to take on the go. I'm gonna open it and show you what's inside. There's a whole world in here for kids to explore. I can't open this side, but you kind of get the idea. Um, there's everything kids need inside to pretend that they're a vet. They can even store their little animals and their little vet tools in here and take it with them. Next up, we have Gabby goes to nursery school from Carole. Carole makes beautiful dolls. This doll has a nice element to her because she helps kids, sorry, she helps kids get ready for a nursery school. It's helping them make the transition through role play. So she has everything she needs for her first day of school. She comes with a little backpack and some accessories, her snacks, pacifier. This will retail, this is out in spring and retails for $80. Next we have Schleich. Schleich makes beautiful, creative figures and play sets for kids and this one is no exception. This is part of their horse club series. Um, so this series, about, this series is about four girls who ride horses, they're in their club together. This is their new caravan, which is where they can hold their secret meetings kind of away from their parents. It's their little hideaway. It's got incredible detail. It's got a little trap door inside so they can hide their goodies. And it's just a lot of fun for imaginative play. Next we have the Bubble Grill from Sunny Days Entertainment. This is a great role play toy for kids to pretend they're grilling just like mom and dad and it doubles as a bubble machine. So you put your food on the grill and it blows bubbles. Here we have the Tokido Wakugami pop art from Relevant Play. Tokido is a new molding compound. It's very vibrant. Um, it doesn't dry out. It's really fun to play with. And this set in particular comes with the Wakugami screen. So what you do is you place the dough underneath the screen you use the shaping pieces on top to push through and then the dough pops out. And you can create beautiful 3D art designs that you can display. And last but not least, we have 
This is Sequin the Hedgehog from Faber-Castell. Looks like an ordinary plush, but actually it's weighted. It's got these beautiful sequins that offer great tactile play. It's great for children who are maybe having trouble focusing or dealing with something and they just need to calm down. It's very soothing to play with. And it can also be decorated and personalized. So it comes with these stickers that you can color and then place on your hedgehog. And that is it for me. I'm gonna pass it over to Lori. Hi everyone, I'm Lori. I'm gonna be talking about our games galore trends, as you can see. Um, so growing interest in all types of games over the past few years has led to impressive growth in the games and puzzles category. Sales have risen 23% in 2016 and 3% in 2017. Gameplay is appealing to all ages and all different kinds of interests. We're seeing games that foster intergenerational play with family game nights, um, tons of um, old classics that are coming back in new and fun ways, tons of innovative board games, and of course, the silly laugh out loud, gross out games that we're seeing tons of as well. Social media is also giving a boost to this category by inspiring teens and adults to share their funny or fun gameplay on social media um, in hopes that maybe some of them might go viral. So what I have on the table here is like just a tiny, tiny sampling of what we're seeing out on the floor. Um, and the first one we have here is Watermelon Smash. This is by Yulu International. And basically, um, you know, this is a really fun outdoor game for ages six and up. Um, and it's another take on the water roulette challenge. So basically what you do is you fill it up with water or you could play it indoors as well. And they have these tiny little seeds, lots of them. I only took out a couple um, that you can see if you wanna play indoors. Um, and you use a spinner right here to spin the number, and I got one. So I would basically put this once on my head. So the person that basically, you know, you keep going around in a circle until, you know, the person that the watermelon smashes on, they lose. The last person standing um, wins. So that's Watermelon Smash, and that will be available in the spring and will retail for $19.99. Next, we have um, the Elf on the Shelf Countdown to Christmas by Buffalo Games. Um, this is a new take on the Elf on the Shelf phenomenon, and it's encouraging um, family togetherness with kids, families, and friends. So basically, each night um, in the 24 days leading up to Christmas, um, players will receive these top secret um, envelopes with challenges inside. And basically all of these challenges have different kinds of um, do good challenges. So this one says, um, get two friends to sing a Christmas carol to you. So basically what happens is that the kids, once they um, succeed in doing the challenges, they get um, a sticker or an ornament and they put it on the game board, which of course looks like a Christmas tree. I'll hold this up here so you can see it. And what happens is that basically the, on Christmas Eve, whoever has the most stickers from doing the most good deeds wins. So this is um, Countdown to Christmas by Buffalo Games. It'll be available in the fall and will retail for $25.99. So next, I'm sorry. Next we have, I just knocked over my thing. Next we have, and you'll probably recognize this one. This is um, Dose by Mattel, which is a new take on the classic Uno game. Um, the goal, of course, is to get rid of all of your cards by matching numbers and colors. But in this game, um, instead of yelling Uno when you have one card, you're gonna yell Dose when you have two cards left. <laughs> so it's a great game, you know, if you want to um, take for traveling or um, if you want to, you know, sit around the table with family and friends, it's a great little card game to play. Um, this will be available in the spring and will retail for $5.99. <laughs> Next we have um, Madcap Checkers. This is the S'mores version by Madcap Games. Um, this is, again, a, a new take on Checkers. Um, it's a little bit more strategic, giving a strategic twist. Um, players basically use these adorable, I'll hold them up for you, little marshmallows. 
Um, some are cooked on their campfire, some are still not cooked as their pieces um, to play checkers. But what's different about this game is, first of all, you have a little um, bubble dice popper, and there's three dice in there, and they have either white or brown marshmallows on there, and that's the piece you move. So what's different about this game is that you're, you're actually playing both sides of the game, um, and you have to strategically move both pieces, um, both yours and your opponent's, to get your pieces to the other side. Um, of course, if you get your piece to the other side, you can get kinged by the graham cracker that has a little bite ticket with it. So this is um, Mad Cat Games, and will be available in the spring and um, retails for $25.99. Next we have um, Pirate Pong, which is a really fun take on table tennis or ping pong. Um, it's pretty, it, this is by Cortex Games. Um, so this is a great active game and a new take on ping pong. And what you do is you put on your pirate patch and you use your scabbard and you're going to basically play table tennis. Um, you know, first one to 11 or first one to 21, whichever you want to play first. Um, the net is portable so it makes any tabletop um, a good playing surface. Um, and of course, this you would have to use your pirate voice to play with this game, so arr. <laughs> so this um, will be available in the fall and will retail for $24.99. Next we have, excuse me. Um, next we have Life and the Coral Reef. This is by Tactic. So basically you're using your coral, I didn't take the whole thing out because I was running out of space on my table. But basically, you're going to um, take your coral reef puzzle board, and I'll just hold this up a little bit so you can see. But you can arrange it in any form or fashion that you want. You don't have to do just a straight um, square or rectangle. You can make it long. You can make it um, you know, however shape you want. And what you see on them is you see all kinds of aquatic life that's on this board. And you also get a, your own lagoon um, little table here, and basically you have to match what's on the cards to the aquatic life that's on the board, and the first one to do that will win an, a marine figure. So the first one to get five marine figures on their, in their lagoon wins. So this is Life in the Coral Reef by Tactic, and it's available now and will, retails for $19.95. So last but not least, um, you know, we could not forget um, any sort of silly gross out games. Um, this is um, Don't Step On It by Hasbro. And um, this is a mat that lays flat out, but again, I didn't have space on here, so I just kind of cut it up a little bit over here. So basically, um, the goal is obviously not to step on the poo. <laughs> so you basically place, um, you know, you, ha they have, you get a mold and you can create this. Um, poo with some of the compound that they give you. You place it across the mat. Um, you spin the spinner. You know, so mine lands it on three. And I basically have to put my blindfold on and get across the mat without stepping in the poo. So this is by Hasbro. Um, it's available now, and it's for $19.99. And that's it. That's games. All right. So I will cover the last two trends that we have. First is the toys that teach. As you know, uh, toys that are educational, not just uh, for entertainment, have always been very popular. Parents love that the fact that their child can not only play, but also learn. And building on the popularity of STEM and STEAM toys over the past few years, the industry has uh, developed toys that teach not just those um, science, technology, engineering, math skills, but also basic skills. Uh, learning your words, your colors, your alphabets, your basic motors, your basic cognitives, um, and also just kind of taking it all the way to the highest level. So here's a small sample of some of these. First is the uh, learning Friends, a hundred words book by Leapfrog. And this is a book that teaches a hundred words in both English and Spanish. So the words are sort of put together in different categories. So we have pets, we have animals. We can turn it on here. We have food, fruits, clothes, and basically you touch. 
So this is the monkey telling you he eats from a plate because this is mode is sort of the sound mode. So whatever you touch sort of kind of works around a sound, a specific sound. So the boots, that's the sound they make when you walk on them and they're wet. Then you have a fact mode. So, so it's telling you that we put foot on the bowl. Um, the same would happen if you did like, <gasps> foot needs a sock. And then you have just the regular words so that you can listen. It's a little bit of music. It's kind of show you that on the ear you listen. And like I said, it's also in Spanish. And it has a little bit of a fun star sort of. <laughs> a little bit of music and fun. For, so this is, as you can see, very light and portable. So it's great for the you know, child to carry around if they want. And it's just a way for them to start learning their um, vocabulary in two languages, no less. Then moving on, we have Lupita. Lupita is uh, the story of uh, the Mexican tradition of Our Lady of Guadalupe. So Lupita tells us about how the Virgin Mary appeared to Juan Diego during the uh, Spanish conquest in Mexico. So Lupita has a mission. Her mission is to do good uh, starting December 12th, which is the day of the Guadalupe, through January 6th, which in Hispanic culture is Three Kings Day and sort of the official end of the holiday season. Um, since Lupita's mission is to do good, she wants, she challenges children to do a good deed every day during the Christmas season and then write to her about it so she can let the wise men know and hopefully they'll bring the children um, a gift on January 6th. So she comes with the story. The story is both in English and in Spanish. She also has an app which brings the story to life and there's a calendar so you can keep track of all your good deeds. So this is really about teaching kids um, not just educational skills but also social skills, being a good citizen um, and doing good for others, being kind. Next we have Bodley. Bodley is the coding robot from Learning Resources. And coding is something that um, we see a lot of toys uh, teach because it is a very important skill nowadays. And Bodley does it in a very fun way. So let me turn him on. So, so Bodley doesn't need any type of uh, device. He comes with his own remote control, which is used to transmit the, pro uh, the program and the code to him. Um, he also works with this mat that you can lay out, which has a line, and he actually will follow the line. But the kit that he, he comes in comes with 77 different pieces um, so that you can set up obstacle course. So really, even though you're starting at five years old, you know, it's a child, can start playing with Botley at five years old, it really grows with the child because as he gets more and more comfortable with the programming um, and learning how to make Botley do things, they can get really, really complex and the, all the pieces in the kit can help him set, in, set him do like really cool obstacle cores and really fun things. So that's Botley. Then we have the color chemistry by Crayola. So this is, you know, a more of your uh, sort of fun experiments, trying to figure out how things work with the added element of color and combining the colors and learning a little bit about the science of color. So there's uh, actually 16 different experiments in the box and it includes a book that has an additional 34 experiments you can do. This one that I have here is a volcano. Um, and it actually has three fizzy tablets uh, that are in different colors. So it's really, you know, your, base, your basic putting in a little water. And, oh. and then you put your little fizzy tabs and you combine them so that you have no idea what the color. I mean, every time you do this, the color will be different. You can use um, two of the colors instead of Three, you can do only one, and then it'll just kind of, it makes it really fun for them to try all these things. But the other experiments that it included has like glow slimes, um, making, uh, sorry, making glow worms, making slime, and a whole bunch of other things. So just, you know, a way for them to learn, but have fun doing it. Then we have the Turing Tumble, and this is uh, one of our uh, new companies as well. And this is um, 
a way to build a mechanical computer using marbles to solve logic puzzles. So how do you do that? So the, the computer comes with all these different uh, bits. So we have gears and all these different little parts that you set up to do all sorts of different things. So it can add, it can subtract, it can divide, it can multiply, it can create patterns, um, it can solve logic puzzles. Basically it can do what a computer can do. And children are learning how to program a computer as they are playing with this. And it has an additional really fun element which is it comes with this book that has a story. So we have a character who has crash landed in a for forgotten planet and the only way she's going to get out is by solving the 60 puzzles that are included in the book. So while the child is learning how to set the computer and program it, they are actually helping Aaliyah escape the, uh, escape the planet that she's in. And it kind of starts them off in the most simplest to the most complicated, but they could even take it beyond that if, you know, once they kind of get comfortable with the whole concept of it. And as you can see, the computer what it's doing right now is doing a pattern. So it's doing three blue marbles with one red, and then three blue, one red, three blue, one red, and it'll continue doing that. Right here. And then here we have our Molly Manners doll. This is part of a larger doll line from Goldberger. And Molly Manners teaches kids about manners, being polite. She has this, a little song. I don't know if you can hear it. But she sings a song, um, says that she's all polite, that she likes to share. Um, she always tries to do what's right. She can sort of, she likes, she can curtsy. curtsy. You can see her skirt sort of lifts, lifts up so she can curtsy. So it's, it's, she's actually also very soft and cuddly. And so it's a great way for uh, the younger kids to start learning about good manners, about being polite to others, about sharing with others, um, you know, and just being kind in general. So those are the toys that teach, and I will finish it up with the tech. Okay. All right. Okay, so first we have from Playmobil, uh, so, oh, sorry before I do that. So let me just kind of give you a little bit of interest. So, you know, tech has always been very, very popular, uh, of course, especially as technology keeps on evolving. And what we're seeing on the show floor is a lot of toys that not only incorporate the digital aspect, but also incorporate the physical aspect. Uh, we're also seeing toys that uh, incorporate a lot of augmented reality, virtual reality, and also, as you can see in some of the toys that you see here, but also some of the toys that you've probably seen, there's a lot of license uh, being incorporated into toys, which is very uh, common. Every year we have lots of movies. Jurassic World is an example, um, but we've, you know, there's going to be The Incredibles 2 for this year, um, as well as some licenses from TV shows, very, uh, TV shows that are Netflix series or even just uh, old you know, uh, more classic shows like How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Duck, Duck, Goose, etc. So let me start you off. So here is uh, the Playmograms by Playmobil, which is using the Ghostbusters license. And what they've done this year is they come out with four of these. It's, each one is one of the um, characters from the original movie. And this is Spengler. And this is a hologram. So let's see if we can... So it comes with an app that you download. Obviously, the app is free. Then uh, you put your ghost trapper on your phone. And let me just, aha, there we go. Right, you can hear. Obviously, this works the best in low light, but you actually have a little tent here. You can kind of see, let's see. Where are you at, buddy? Right. Well, you can hear very well, but um, it also, you can see the ghost sort of come up when in, in here. And then you have Spengler here, who's your action figure, and he's shooting at it with his gun. So you're mirroring the physical with the digital, and it's a very simple, uh, way of doing it, but it's very effective, um, and it cre you know, and it 
leads for a lot of fun. Then we have Drone, our Jurassic World. So again, another license. And this one will take, oh, there he goes. All right, so from Jurassic World, we have the drone. And this is, you know, Pterodactyl. He's flying. He's going to be flying around. So I apologize in advance. If, so let's make him <laughs> fly. Hey, thank you. So he's not only obviously tech, but also a license. Um, just great for when you're, you know, when you're playing, uh, make believe you're trying to recreate the movie or whatnot. You got these guys flying around. It's like being inside the Jurassic World. So just lots of fun. Um, then we have from Connects, we have Thrill Rides. And this includes, um, this is again, a combination of the physical with the digital. So you get your roller coaster set that you built right? Um, and then you have uh, an augmented reality component to it that will allow you to kind of live the experience of the roller coaster. So you build, you know, you have the fun of building your own roller coaster. You kind of see it in action, you know, physically, that's cool. But then you have an app that you get to download and then you get to put it on your goggles and you get to actually experience it as if you were riding the roller coaster. And it's really cool. And actually with the app, you can also then build your own roller coaster on the app itself. You can make it as hell raising as you want. And then <laughs> you can use the goggles to experience it for yourself. Next, we have Augie, who's over there. And Augie is a coding robot that also uses augmented reality. And I will let sure. her talk about it. Hi everyone, I'm Amy from Pi Technology. So Augie is a coding robot, robot as she mentioned, and why we're here is because Augie actually uses augmented reality to teach coding. One of the only products on the market to do so, and how it works, I can't actually see what Sherry is doing over here. But what happens is you select one of our 60 levels. We have over 60 different augmented reality course maps um, that are all tied to code.org levels, and essentially what happens is she finds Augie, she locates it, she orients it in the AR map, and then sends Augie through the map with the scratch-like blocks. So as I mentioned, uh, I think, I don't know if uh, Isabel mentioned, this is $199. It is available now and it actually will be in Target stores near you come April 2nd. Um, if that wasn't enough, Augie actually allows you to create your own um, AR maps as well that you can then control Augie through. <laughs> so that's Augie and their Pi technology. All right, um, and then we have the uh, flying golden snitch. And yes, this is from Harry Potter. And basically, you can, the golden, this, this niche, the way it works, it has infrared technology under it. So it senses, you control it with your hands, but it senses your hands, your feet, your body, and it kind of tries to go away. And what happens is this kind of makes it like on the real Quidditch game, where you, in order to capture it, but it doesn't let you capture it. So. <laughs> and then we have a, they have another smaller one, which is a little bit more magical, because it doesn't use actual um, flying technology. It actually is more of a magical aspect to it. So check it out. All right, and then we have the 4D science uh, from and 4D chemistry from Spicebox. And this is also, again, the uh, kind of your sort of uh, regular kit where you have all these experiments that are really fun. You have a book that teaches you how to do the experiments, walks you through them and whatnot. But the additional component to this toy is the AR that allows you to, using your phone and an app, you put the goggles on, you point it at the book, and then your professor character, this guy here, comes to life in the book and actually walks you through the steps of the experiment. But he adds a new perspective, so he's not reading the instructions, he's actually telling you, oh yeah, and then in my day, this is kind of how we did it, but here, let me show you. So it's really fun for the kids to use the book, kind of interact with the professor, learn how to do, and then go ahead and give it a go on their own. So again, marrying the physical with the digital and adding a little bit of that element to it. And this could also be a, you know, considered a toy that teaches, so the cross trend here. 
And then last and certainly not the least, Nintendo Labo is here to show you their coolest new thing. Hi guys, thanks for having us, Isabel. Um, we're excited to introduce Nintendo Labo. And Nintendo Labo kits are what we consider to be interactive build and play experiences that are designed to inspire creativity and discovery in kids of all ages. And Nintendo Labo is specially designed to interact with the Nintendo Switch video game system. And it allows kids to transform modular sheets of cardboard into interactive creations, which we call Toy-Con. And that can be everything from a 13-key piano, a fishing rod, a motorbike, a robot, and much more. And um, Nintendo Labo is unique in that we believe that the building and the discovery are just as much fun as actually playing with the Toy-Con. And that's why we've categorized the experience into three different pillars, make, play, and discover. And additionally, kids are encouraged to customize their Toy-Con creations <laughs> using any of their favorite craft supplies, whether that's glitter, googly eyes, tape, anything like that. Uh, the imagination is the limit. Uh, and I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Danny, to give you a very quick demo of uh, what the Nintendo Labo experience looks like. Thank you for that. So real quick, so as, you, as she mentioned, um, you do start with these cardboard sheets. They are engineered for working with Nintendo Labo. You actually can pop them out and then fold and manipulate them in different ways. And the way you'll do that is you'll actually follow along with some instructions right here. I'm going to bring up on the Nintendo Switch. So right here you can kind of see you can fast forward backwards. Thank you. You can fast forward, you can go backwards in it, you can even rotate this around, you can zoom in, zoom out, so you can actually get a really good feel of what you need to do to make each of these pieces come to life and then put them all together to start forming those different pieces. Now once you're done with that, you can back out of here and I'm gonna hopefully, let's see how the music works out for this. I'm gonna switch to play. So using the right Joy-Con right here, I'm going to put this right here in the back. So right now, you can see on the screen, I'm going to put this right by so you can hear it. There's, there's even some knobs, you can change the sound effects. This is all made of cardboard. And other things along those lines as well. But what's cool about this along with that as well, can you hold this for just one second? And then let's actually, so inside, I'm going to show you the inside of what you can see inside of the Toy-Con piano. There actually is nothing inside. Um, so that's the trick right there. So all this magic is happening. Let's go really quickly over here. I'm going to make one quick jump to show you what this looks like on the inside. So, so as you said, I was going through make, play, and now I'm going to the discover segment of it to show you how this piano works on the inside real quickly. I'm going to put this right back in the piano in just a second. So what you're seeing right here, move this around this way. So what you're actually seeing right here, so that's the right here is the Toy-Con piano you see completely there. If I scroll this over, you can start seeing inside. That right there, that red field division, that's the actual, that's the right Joy-Con has an IR motion camera that's able to read what is going on inside and actually see everything being sensed inside. So it's a nice way for people, to, for kids of all ages to see, go through that whole process of making something by folding those and nipping that cardboard with the interactive instructions, playing with these different toy con creations different ways, and then even get a chance to discover how and why these work. There are two different kits coming out on April 20th. One is called the Variety Set, which comes with a Toy-Con motorbike, a piano, a fishing rod, an RC car, and a, a house, which has different blocks. And what uh, Camille's wearing right here is the Toy-Con robot, which is the second set that's coming out. And on top of all of that, there actually is one other feature, which, let me grab this up here. Whoop. These are here. So this is a nice introduction. This will actually be, this is actually something on the software itself, but for example, I'm just showing it here this way right now. You actually can use um, an introductory technology using input and output nodes that you can then create and invent new ways to play with your Toy-Con creations or even invent new Toy-Con. And that's actually built into the software for both, for both for all the kits as well. So you can enjoy it in that way as well. But that, that's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much it. And again, it's all powered by the Nintendo Switch. That's really important to remember as well. So again, this is just a sampling of 
the many, many, many toys on the floor. Um, I urge you to take, you know, take a walk, take a look at them. Some of them, you know, we can't fully demo out here because there's just not enough room, but it's just uh, lots of great stuff out there. So hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Okay, and guys, um, all of the information on these products that have been demonstrated are in the press office, and also we obviously encourage you to go and visit the products at the booths and everything. And any questions, the Trends team is here. So if you have any questions or anything, please you know, come and ask. And again, as Isabel had mentioned, this is a tiny, tiny sampling of all some of the incredible things that are out there on the floor. Thank you very much.